it's a tale as old as time. And or as old as button locks. Which budget button lock is the greatest budget button lock? Which ones are worth your money and which ones aren't worth jack sh Before you are all of my budget button locks. Now, budget in the circumstance is $100 or less. $100 being the tippy top, the precipice of the budget price range. Okay. And they go all the way down to about 30 bucks. And there's a lot to like here. These are all of them I, that I can remember, that I could find. I don't know why I'm wearing these glasses. Don't talk to me. But I'm going to walk you through them. And I'm going to let you know. Which ones are worth your money, which ones aren't? We're going to start at the tippy top here, the precipice, the most expensive of the budget button locks that I own. We're missing one. Time out. Ha! I almost... <laughs> I almost forgot. We're going to have to scooch. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. There they are. Those are all the... <laughs> Those are all the budget button locks that I own. And let's just start with the Tucson. This is the Tucson TS388. It's a big old chunk of a knife, okay? I, I unbox... I, I haven't even done any content on this. I bought this at Blade Show this year. Not Blade Show West. That just happened. The real Blade Show. The real thing. The real deal, pal. Capish. The TS338 here. D2 blade. Real tall. Real nice. Big, gnarly lug nut freaking... Look at... Just look at the... What if, they're lug nuts. The big old thumb studs here, these three little screws. Uh, titanium, uh, micarta, titanium pocket clip. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot for 100 bucks. You know what I mean? Like, there's no doubt about it. Nice decorative milling there. You can see some micro milling here on uh, the bolster area on both sides. Uh, great knife. Designed by Night Morning Designs, I believe. Uh, kind of a very prominent Tucson designer. A wild looking knife. Ergos in hand. Feel great. There's no real choke up point, but you can get right about here. No problem. No problem at all. Choke back, feels fine, fills the hand really well. Real thick knife, real chonky, not crazy heavy. Action is where this thing falls short. Um, at least this particular model. First off, miles. Miles of blade play. Lock, rock, call it what you will. There's miles of it. It's a very soft detent. There's also a substantial amount of blade play left and right, or you crank it down too much. It, it's it's bizarre. So this this knife has this weird thing where if you loosen the pivot too much, there's too much spring tension, too much detent, and it's almost impossible to open. And then if you loosen it, too, or if you tighten it too much, then it becomes a flippy floppy mess. It's all backwards. It doesn't make any sense. But it's a really cool looking knife. It just has its issues. Again, D2, it seems to be treated really well. I'm still running on the factory edge. I use this quite a lot, and it's still scary sharp. Real tall, flat grind. Kind of this black wash blade. It's a cool looking knife. But for $100, I think we can do better. So that is why, you know... I. I think maybe we'll tear these out by as we go. Well, let's move on to the next most expensive. You'll you'll notice a lot of Kaisers here, and I can't remember which one of these two costs the most. This is the new, the newest, I should say. Uh. The <laughs> this is the new, new, the good Kush. This is that new Kaiser Mini Towser K. If you've had the Towser K, you know you love it. This is the new button lock version. Uh, the mini version was going for $99 with the Tri-State 10 discount code. It was $89. Oh, I'm so sorry. The T's getting to me. I've been using mine, as you can tell, by the goopy gunk on the blade. Love this knife. There's an unboxing for this knife. Link is in the description. I'm all gassed up. Uh, as it stands, we'll see as I go through these and reminisce upon them. But, as it stands, uh, this... This thing's kind of stolen my heart over the past few weeks. It is the newest, so I'm still kind of in that honeymoon stage. You know, I don't want to go off and say like, oh, this is as good as it gets for a budget button lock, but it's pretty hard to beat. CPM 3V blade steel, beautiful, super tall, belt satin finished, tall flat grind there, crazy thin behind the edge. Action is, oh, 
money. Oh, it makes a good noise. There's a lot to like here. There's a lot to love here. But is it worth your $89? I, honestly, for me, if you like the way this knife looks, this is a steal. How long these will be around is going to be an issue, and we'll come to that here in a minute. But that's number two on the list. Number three, another exclusive. This was a White Mountain Knives exclusive. The full size is still available, I believe. I hope they do more, because that's they that one's dynamite. So it's a home run. It's a slam dunk, baby. This guy here is the Feldspar Buttonlock, the CJRB Feldspar Buttonlock. This was, what, 50 bucks, $45? Basically free when it was available? Unfortunately, it has its issues. Now, I love the Feldspar. I just love this knife. It's simple, it's clean, it's one of my favorite budget knife designs out there. It's just a knife. Classic drop point, nice tall flat, uh, flat grind there. It's great ergos, contoured scales, skeletonized stainless liners, a lot to love. The issue is the action, which is, um, for a button lock, you want it, look, does it work? Yes. But I have that pivot so cranked right now. If you, if that pivot backs out even a little bit, it's game over. And you're going to be, it, there's still mountains of up and down blade play, miles of left and right. It's a wibbly wobbly mess, Okay. That being said, cutting performance is great. Uh, this is uh, uh, Artisan Cutlery CGRB's AR RPM9 steel. Great budget steel. One of my favorites. Made in China, obviously. Everything so far has been made in China. Everything will be made in China on this list. Just get that out of the way. It's a nice looking knife. I was really pumped when they were releasing this as a button lock. But unfortunately, the execution, it just wasn't there for me. So, you know... Kind of disappointed. It's still here because I don't. It has too many issues for me to sell it to somebody. I may give it away at some point, but even then, we'll see. Um, why not? Let's go with the big daddy. This is another Kaiser. This is the Kaiser XL, the Big Lighter XL, baby. The big daddy, the big cheese, Azo design, a big hoss of a knife, a monstrosity, uh, and another one, just like the other Kaiser on the list, that just like. Stole my heart. First and foremost, the detent, the spring tension, money. Cash money. It's un they absolutely nailed the action on this knife. No, no button stick, nothing like that. 154 CM blade, full flat, almost a full flat grind. Not a completely full flat grind, but damn near. Damn near full flat grind. Really nice micarta, skeletonized liners, really great stamped deep carry pocket clip, stainless. Uh just an, a, just an absolute hoss. So the flipper tab, we have multiple modes of actuation. Reverse flick on the thumb studs, thumb flick. All day. And it just, you know, it just drops. And that's what you want to see. And it goes ting, ting, ting. That's what you want to see. Watch what happens with the CGRB. Lane. Like if I press the button and don't move, nothing, nothing. There it goes, finally. See? See what I mean by there's issues with the action there? This one, if I press the button, it closes every damn time. This one was, I think, $89.90 bucks, around the same price as the the uh, uh, Towser K here. Both of these, well worth the money. Well, well, well worth the money. Killer cutting performance. Kaiser does a dynamite job with their 154CM. Really big fan overall. Same here. The CPM3V seems to be holding up better than their quote-unquote CPM10V that was on the mini sheet. We're not going to get into that. How about another Kaiser for you? This is the Kaiser original. Yes, that's what it's called. It's I, The name is confusing to me. Uh, this is a great little knife. This is much smaller in comparison than the uh, Big Lighter XL. If, you, if you're wondering, it's a little bit smaller. It's a little guy. This is a great kind of light. Light use EDC. Um, Kaiser original stamp there on the blade. There's an unboxing for this up there too. I love the color. Stamp deep carry clip with the little OG logo on there. It's a nice touch. Uh, aluminum scales. Feels great in the hand. Kind of squared off, but everything's nicely knocked down. Ergos are great. Fills my hands relatively well. No real complaints there. It's a good little knife. Uh, damn near full flat grind once again. 154 CM once again. Crazy thin and slicey. A great knife. But... Over the months that I have owned this, the just from flicking it too much, the coating has... <laughs> whatever coating they're using on the thumb studs is just 
melting away. It looks like I dragged this thing across concrete. It looks like I took sandpaper to the damn thing. So it's maybe a slight material or build quality issues there. Call it what you will. Um, action is great. It's a little softer on the detent. It's not, I keep calling it a detent, but you know what I mean. With the, the spring tension equals detent, okay? Um, action closing's amazing. No button stick, nothing like that. It's just that spring could use a little more, a little more extra oomph. It's not quite as snappy as either the two or, uh, the two newer Kaisers, but it's still great. Reverse flicks are great. Thumb flicks are dynamite. Makes a great noise, and it's not a scary knife. Like this is one. To, go 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 to the theater with it. Maybe don't do that. Don't listen to me. I'm just a weird guy with knives on the internet. All in all, really cool knife. Really digging this thing. I, I always have a coated blade on this one. There are multiple versions of it. Um, this was a Mojave Outdoors kind of, which is Kaiser's American storefront. It's all very confusing. But uh, Mojave Outdoors, if there's links for any of these, I will find them. I will put, I will give them to you. But I love the original. I just don't quite love it as much as these two. I gotta be honest. Like, these are kind of at the tippy top so far as I'm going through this. As I'm going through this laundry list. Let me get some tea real quick. A little tea break. <sighs> Let's move on to one that you may or may not be able to buy anymore. This was like the OG. Not the, not the Kaiser original. This was the actual original. Ironically enough made by Tangram. This is the Tangram Vector. Um, this was my first ever button lock. I bought this before the Protec Malibu came out. Because I knew I was going to get one. I knew I needed one. But I just wanted to make, at the time, that was going to be a lot of money for me to spend on a knife. I wanted to make sure it was going to be worth it. So I got this, a blue aluminum button lock. This one was like 35 bucks when I bought it. Um, Tangram is an offshoot of Kaiser. Was uh, a bunch of guys from Kaiser founded Tangram. Unfortunately, Tangram was very short-lived. Uh, apparently, there's still some supplies and stocks out there. But um, I don't know that they're making new knives. Uh, something tells me this all became concept. I'm, I don't know. I don't know the exact history. But, really cool, decorative, uh, crazy milling all over this, like, wave pattern. All over the handles, both sides. Kind of a really basic stamp clip. Not the best, but it carries relatively well. Super small, uh, if you can see it next to the Kaiser original. It's about that size. A little bit taller. Fills the hand much better. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It's very smooth in the hand, you know. Um, and another issue... All of the rest of these are running on bearings. Every single one. This one is running on a set of phosphor bronze washers. And not just one, but two. <laughs> They're sandwiched together. So there are two washers on either side of the blade. You can literally see them in there. But, nice and snappy. Like, the spring tension is great. Thumb flicks, reverse flicks, incredible. Cutting performance is amazing. And this steel... For the longest time, and I think to this day, is like top five favorite budget steals ever. 440 Akuto on a Tangram. Chef's, chef's kiss, dude. It's so good. It's such a great steal for day-to-day -day use. Everything about this. The fact that this predates everything on the table. I, it just has a soft... I, there's a little corner of my heart dedicated to the Tangram Vector. Um, I just love this thing. Skeletonized stainless liners, standoff, super basic build, super basic design, a slight recurve on the blade there, but a great slicer, a great daily user, sharpens up incredibly well, straps up really well, and is just a joy to kind of, you gotta give it a flick, like if I press the button, it's nothing's happening, but it's, it's this kind of, you know, it's almost like a $35 Chris Reeve on, on with a button lock mechanism it's kind of bizarre it's not that at all but you, you know what i'm saying i love this thing i just i love this knife <laughs> i just i'm smitten still i've had it for like two years i'm still smitten with that little knife now on to the civitis last but not least the civitis let's save that one for last shall we this is the civivi altus um this was uh one of the earliest budget button lock civivi put out onto the market First off, I love this colorway. Um, and they came in swinging, man. I gotta be honest. Like, this is a great knife. Like the Kaiser original, like the Tangram Vector. It's a very simple design. Drop point blade, really tall flat grind. Uh, Nitro V's the blade steel. Not my favorite. 
sorry, Wee Savivi, I know you love that steel so much. I kind of hate it, but that's a story for another day. Really nice, uh, relatively thin and slicey behind the edge. Uh, uh, thumb studs only, running on bearings, and it is good and snappy, dude. I mean, it is, as far as kind of spring tension dialing goes this 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 might sit atop the list it's just so well dialed in uh, i also love this colorway this is from the factory this maroon and black is just so nice looking so classy again not a very scary knife nice textured g10 uh the the og the uh deep carry clip from savivi love that you know not a lot to dislike about this knife but the performance i get out of this nitro v keeps this thing out of my pocket because that steel it it it's it you know it's never shivered me timbers shall we say but a really cool knife it is a weighty one especially compared to these last two in this size range you know smaller knife you know it's kind of hefty kind of a thick boy girthy you know what i mean but just a hoot to fidget with i just love this thing man lockup's great uh a very subtle amount of up and down and left and right blade play but nothing crazy you're gonna get blade play no matter what you're gonna get a little wiggle no matter what on a button lock unless it's like a hawk design god knows what you know, satan's asshole for thirteen thousand dollars then you're not gonna get any blade play something in this price point it's kind of unavoidable wait was there blade play on the on this one yeah, a little bit, even though it's perfectly dialed in. It's just kind of unavoidable. And finally, the, the Civivi Altus, by the way. This was $75, $85, which when you look at the Kaisers and the, you know, mm, it's another issue. Value proposition here, not that great. Not the greatest, if I'm, be, you know, if I'm being honest. Last but not least, another Civivi. This is the Civivi Chevalier. Ah, uh, oui. I... Was really pumped for this knife. Uh, I was itching for it. Middle of the year, or beginning of the year, whenever these came out. Beautiful sheep's foot. It came out after the Altus and after the Conspirator? Cogent? One of those two? I don't remember. There's been a lot of Savidi button locks. I don't have them all. I just have these two. Nice. Really nice micarta on this. Great texturing to it. Uh, again, skeletonized liners. That great Savidi deep carry pocket clip that I love so much. Ergo's in hand. Much bigger knife. Fills the hand great. Really nice uh, texturing. Really nice jimping on the blade spine. It's a great knife. Like, a great all-rounder. Action. So, the flipper, really nice. Really snappy. Like, I really don't have any complaints there. But, there's this stupid groove. Do you see this microscopic groove? Do we... Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this shit? It's, it's meant to be a deployment slot. Yes, you can reverse flick it. Yes, you can thumb it out. That sounds weird. You can thumb flick it out. No problem. But why is it so small, Savivi? Why have you done this? Why did you do this? This is too small. This is... I'm going to zoom you in. This is micro-fucking-scopic. Look at this thing. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I looking at here, dude? It's ridiculous. It's too, it's too fucking small. It's just too damn... Sorry. Pardon my French... Uh, but a full flat grind on this one. Again, I think this is Nitro V. Oh, this is 14C28N. I've gotten much better performance out of this than I have out of this Nitro V on the Altus. So this is good. They seem to have done a great job with the blade steel. I did have to reprofile it about seven times to get a good clean edge on it. I had to do the same thing with the with the, this fucking thing. But all that being said, it's a great knife. It's a good size, if not a little too big, honestly. Um, lengthwise. I don't know. It's just like so long and slender. It doesn't really make a ton of sense. It's also very kind of boring. I don't know. Um, I think the Altus is the more exciting of the two, but I do like the black coated blade. I do like the green micarta. It's a great knife. Again, though, value, 85 bucks. You know, you know, I still, of this entire lineup, if I had to pick, since we're coming up on 20 minutes and I don't want to keep you here all day. That's what we're here for. The glasses are coming off. If I had to pick one of these knives, one, right now, right this second, and I could only have that one, I gotta be honest with you, I think it's the Towser. <laughs> this thing, this thing has rocked my world since the day it arrived. Uh, it's the most put together. It's the most kind of dialed in design of everything 
Even though it was an existing design, this is the mini version. And I, as far as I know, it's the first time they've done a mini Towser K. The spring tension, the detent, the action, the noises it makes. It's all good. This rich light. I My only gripe with this knife is this stupid rich light pattern. This like parquet flooring from 1939. I, yeah, I don't know about that. But everything else about it, just out, fresh out of the box, was incredible. And there's always... Things you have to do with the budget button lock, especially a budget button lock. As far as dialing things in, getting the spring right, I have to take almost every single one of these, I've had to take apart out of the box, take the spring out and stretch it out or compress it because it was too tight or too loose. This one, it's money. It's money out of the box. The, it breaks like a regular detent. It makes such great noises. The cutting performance is unreal. So as of the filming of this video, all, when all is said and done, you know, we shop with our eyes, but I can tell you from experience that the two, th three knives stand out here for me, right? And it's these three. Two Kaisers and a would-be Kaiser. <laughs> it's this guy, the uh, Beglider XL, and this one just because it's, it's a special knife for me. It was my first manual bun lock, and it's mm, chef's kiss. Bring it back. Somebody revive this thing. Put, it, put bearings on it for me. Thanks. You know, whether or not this was informative, I don't know. It's late. My wife's still out of town. Uh, I'm, I was, like, in the middle of doing laundry, and I was like, you know what I need to do? I need to film this budget bun lock video. Well, I don't know if you learned anything. <laughs> I hope you were at least entertained. This guy, both sizes, the full size and the mini, well worth the money. The uh, Beg Lighter XL is such... This thing is cash money. The button lock Beg Lighter XL... It's such a great design, and it's such a well-dialed-in knife. It is big, though. It's big as fart. So, honestly, personally, maybe I would prefer a regular size big lighter button lock, but then that becomes the Kaiser original. But still, the original's great, too. These four are meh at best. These four are, are top dog, and I think of the lot, this guy right here, the Towser K, man. The Buttonlock Towser K from White Mountain Knives. I will leave a link for all of these in the description. But a champion has been crowned, finally, after six long months. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye now.